was a terrible night in the desert. They were putting the camels to bed. And one of them sat with his legs crossed, scratching the back of his head. The perfume which came from the camels filled everyone with delight. You can always find them by their censer, no matter how dark the night. They eat lots of sand in the desert. It doesn't hurt them a bit. Do you know why they eat sand in the desert? No! Because the girls like the men full of grit. <laughs> On the banks of the beautiful Nile The women on Sundays go washing their undies And the cold winds in March blow round their marble arch On the banks of the beautiful Nile Oh, it's wonderful there The dancing girls wear is a smile They start shimmy shaking with every limb quaking but one dusty queen busted a tambourine on the banks of the beautiful Nile. On the banks of the beautiful Nile, the natives like swimming with other men's women. The girls are all grand, they all swim with one hand on the banks of the beautiful Nile. It's wonderful there, they sit on the banks for a while. One girl lay in rapture, a crocodile snapped her. The girl in her grief showed me marks of his teeth on the banks of the beautiful Now, here's a clever one. Now, here's a clever one. Two boys, you know the type of boys I mean? <laughs> Two of those uh, considerate boys, you see. And uh, they're sitting in their flat, and one said, I said, um, John, he said, uh, <laughs> he said, what would you like to do? <laughs> so the other man said, well, I, he said, I don't rightly know, see. <laughs> So uh, he said, I'll tell you what, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to, see, he said, we'll go to the pictures. He said, no, I don't want to go to the pictures, it'll be too crowded. He said, well, I'll tell you what then, if you like, if you want to, see, <laughs> we'll stay in and we'll play games. <laughs> and the other one said, well, what would you like to play? He said, well, I'll tell you what, he said, if you like, if you want. <laughs> He said, we'll play hide and seek. He said, well, how do you play it? He said, well, look, he said, I'll hide, say, and if you find me, you can kiss me. And if you don't find me, I'll be in the wardrobe. <laughs> I've just come clean from Paris. And what's a bit of doing to come clean from Paris? A deaf and dumb man got married and his wife made him wear boxing gloves in bed. That was to stop him talking in his sleep. The girl said to me, she said, Maxie, she said, why do men get up in the early hours of the morning? I said, what do you mean, in the middle of the night? She said, yes. I said, well, 10% get up to go to the kitchen to get something to eat. <laughs> and 20% get up to, um, well, they get up because they want to go out. <laughs> and I said, the other 10% get up to go home, that's all I can think of. <laughs> I said to my father, I said, Dad, I want to go to Paris. He said, you're not going to Paris. I said, look, I want to go to Paris. I want to see the Folies Bergeres. He said, you're not going. 
He said, you might see something there that you shouldn't see. And he was right. I went. I saw him there. <laughs> I, bought a, I bought a car the other day, a used car, a used car. I bought a used car. And I, I don't know what it was used for. <laughs> so I said to the farmer, I said, what is it? He said, it's a coop. I said, that's, um, that's what they keep um, birds in. He said, that's right. So he went to the back of the, the car and he opened it and he, and he brought out a chicken. He said, will you stay for lunch? I said, yes, I'll stay. So he, he took all the feathers off the chicken and he put it in the oven and closed the door. He said, when we come back, we'll have that. So he came back and he opened the door. And when he opened the door, the chicken said, listen, he said, now, I had to put my feathers back. I like the gas. It's bloody cold in here. <laughs> There's a fellow working at the docks, working at the docks, and he said to the governor, he said, could I have the afternoon off? He said, not Saturday afternoon. He said, you get double pay. He said, I'm not concerned about double pay. He said, I want to go home. He said, the wife's expecting a happy event. Oh, he said, in that case, you better go then. So he went home. He came back on Monday, and the governor said, all right. He said, yes, it turned out all right. He said, what is it, a boy or a girl? He said, we won't know until about eight months' time. <laughs> is really funny this is really true what I'm going to tell you now is really true and I mean that I met a girl and I said to her I said um, uh, was it, matter of fact this was at a bus stop too this is a bus stop <laughs> she said um, um, will you marry me she said I'm different to other girls I said well if you're too different I'll have to consider it <laughs> I said, would you like to go for a drive? She said, no thanks, I'm too tired, it's going to walk. <laughs> well, anyway, she got into the car, she got into the car, and I noticed she was wearing a big um, bangle on her wrist, a big bangle on her wrist. And I said to her, I said, uh, what's that? I said, she said, it's a suppressor. <laughs> I said, I've got one of those on the car, it stops interference. She said, that's why I'm wearing it. <laughs> Well, we hadn't gone far in the car when all of a sudden the car stopped. I said, the car's broken down. She said, well, what happens now? I shouldn't be a bit surprised. <laughs> I said, I'll tell you what, we're going to have a drink. We're going to have a drink. So we went in the bar. I said, what will you have? She said, well, I don't think I'll have a whiskey. I said, well, I don't have it if you don't want it. I wouldn't fall, so you know what I mean. <laughs> she said, I don't think I'll have a port. I said, can I make a suggestion? She said, yes. Well, let's have the drink first. <laughs> So we had the drink, and when we came out, the car had gone. And there were two bicycles outside the hotel. So we took the two bicycles, and away we went. We hadn't gone far. We had four punctures, not two, four. There was a fork in the road. <laughs> so I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll lie down behind this edge and wait till the morning. She said, why well, wait till the morning? I said, well, because I've got to get home because my wife's a very suspicious woman. If I go on with a hair on my coat, I've got to stay around the stable and show the horse. I said, I was out all one night looking for a ginger horse. You can't find him. Here's one, here's one. You may have heard on your mother's knee or some other little joint. My wife, woke, my wife woke me up. My wife woke me up and she, in the early hours of the morning, she said, Max, the baby's crying. I said, well, get up. I said, it's half yours. She said, my half's not crying. <laughs> A little monologue. They took the vanity from the peacock, the cunning from the fox, the brains from a jackass, the jawbone from an ox. The venom from the viper, the stinger from the bee, 
put them all in my old woman and banged her onto me. <laughs> Two dogs talking, and one said the other, have you done your pools? <laughs> the other one said, no, I just missed the post. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, yeah. Now, years ago, years ago in the north of England, in the north of England years ago, they used to have monkeys on the counter to draw the people in. So there's a monkey on the counter, and a fellow walked in, he said, um, uh, I'll have a large whiskey, and the governor turned round to get the large whiskey. So he hit the monkey and knocked him down. So the governor said, why did you do that? He said, well, I put a pound note on the counter. He said, and he picked up and chewed it up. He said, well, you don't have to hit him. He said, he's a very nice monkey. He said, don't do it again. He said, there's your whiskey and there's your change. So he walked out, he went into another pub. There's another monkey on the counter. So he said the governor gives a large whiskey, the governor turned round to get the whiskey, hit the monkey and knocked him down. So the governor said, why did you do that? He said, I put a pound note down, he said. He picked up and chewed it up. He said, he picked it up. He said, he'd been stuffed 20 years. <laughs> I was in Spain last year. I went over to see a bullfight in Spain, the bullfight. And I was there and I saw a girl there, one of the girls there, she had a knife you know, stocking, like the top of her stocking in the garter. So I said, what's that for then? What's that knife for? She said, that's to defend my honor. I said, if you, if, I said, if you were in Brighton, you'd want a set of carvers. <laughs> a fellow walked into a tailor's and the woman said, what do you want? Come this way. So he said, I want to be measured for a suit. So she took him in the back room. This is funny, you like this. <laughs> so she measured him up, 34 chest, 32 waist, arms 33, 34. She measured the trousers, outside 33, inside 32. She said, I'm not sure about that inside, I'd like to do that again. <laughs> so she measured him inside again, 32. She said, is there anything else you want? He said, I'd like a cap. He said, but really, he said, I'd like to be measured for another pair of trousers. <laughs> now, um, I think I've cracked this, I don't know. Two travellers? No, I don't think I have. Two travellers. They're staying at the farmhouse. Staying at the farmhouse. And, um... They're going along in this car. It's an open car, open car. Got the hood down, and they're going along. And all of a sudden, the car stops, so they walk towards the farmhouse. And when they got there, said the farmer, can you put us up for the night? And the farmer said, well, we're very religious in this house. He said, but uh, I'll see what we can do. He said, um, I'll have a chat with the wife. So he said, uh, we've got a large double bed upstairs. So the fellow said, well, that's no good to us. That's no good to us, because we're not married. Oh, he said, in that case, I've got to think again. Because <laughs> we're, we're very religious in this house, see? So he said, look, he said, I've got an idea, he said. Um, I'll put a pillow down the centre of the bed. She can sleep one side, you can sleep the other. Is that all right with you? The fellow said, it's all right with me, because I'm religious as well. <laughs> so they went to bed, and they got up in the morning, paid a bill, and away they went in the open car. And all of a sudden, a gust of wind came along and blew her hat over into a hedge. So he stopped the car, and he got out. And she said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to jump over that edge to get your hat. She said, jump over that edge? You couldn't jump over two bloody pillars last night. <laughs> Once upon a time, a thousand years ago, there were four good girls. A thousand years ago. <laughs> Once upon a time. And in those days, in those days, they would come to London. They would come to London and they'd stop at the YWCA. Now they come to London and stop at nothing. <laughs> a Yorkshireman came to London, he couldn't get any Yorkshire pudding. He went home and battered himself to death. <laughs> the day in the life of a film star. The day in the life of a film star. She gets up at six o'clock in the morning, takes a bath, 
goes for a five mile walk, comes back and takes another bath, goes off to the studio, does two hours work, takes another bath, comes back in the evening, has a cup of coffee and take another bath. And you must agree with me, ladies and gentlemen, that is about the cleanest joke I've ever cracked. <laughs> There was a young lady bathing at Blackpool. I was there and she was bathing and she was lying down, face down, and a woman came along and she said, I think it's disgusting. What do you think? I said, I think it's all right if you take a broad view of it. <laughs> she said, that's the kind of answer I expected from you, Miller. I said, look here, my good woman. She said, I'm not a good woman. I said, well, you know your own business best. <laughs> A few weeks, I saw her later, a few weeks, standing in Hyde Park on a soapbox. She was addressing a crowd there, and they're all around there, and she said, last night, I was in the arms of the devil. Tonight, I'm in the arms of an angel. And a drunken sailor said, well, how are you fixed for tomorrow night? <laughs> he was so drunk, he didn't know his way back to the ship. So he thought, well, I've got to get fixed somewhere. So he went around and he knocked on a door in a very, very low locality, where they play tennis with hammers. <laughs> and a navvy came to the door, and he said, what do you want? And the sailor said, I'm staying here. He said, well, stay there and shut the bloody door. <laughs> <laughs> there were three stalks, three stalks. Mother stalk, father stalk, and baby stalk. I think I've cracked this, haven't I? No. no right. <laughs> there were three stalks. Mother stalk, father stalk, and baby stalk. Now, Mother Stork flew over to Manchester and she delivered twins. Now, Father Stork, he flew over to Birmingham and he delivered triplets. Now, the baby Stork flew over to Brighton and put the wind up two barmaids. <laughs> There's a funny thing. Now, this is a funny thing. Funny thing happened. I went skating the other week with a young lady on ice. And we've been going around, we've been going around for quite a while, and she kept falling down. I said, uh, you keep falling down. I said, have you hurt yourself? She said, no. She said, she's, I'm sorry. She said, I'm spoiling your fun. I said, you're not spoiling my fun. It'll keep on ice. boat eight women in a boat one was expecting a happy event the other seven wanted to help her and they couldn't they're all in the same boat <laughs> right ladies and gentlemen i finish this program with a song a little song entitled hiking now before i sing this song there's a young lady she wanted to go hiking she couldn't find a male partner so she told her mother, and I said, I'll tell you what to do. Put an advert in the paper and you get all the male partners you want. But don't have your letters addressed here because I'm washing this week. Have your letters addressed in the paper shop in the corner and go and get them for yourself. She said, all right, mother, what kind of an advert should I put in? And her mother told her because her mother was an old IQS as well. <laughs> her mother said, put in a young, strong girl wants a partner for a hiking. And she got 150 letters from these adverts. 150. She was in the front room reading these letters when her mother came in and she was laughing. She said, what are you laughing for? She said, you'd laugh if you knew. I've got one here from father. <laughs> Of course they were both wearing shorts They stopped at the old pig and whistle And there had a couple of ports When they got back the same evening The neighbours all started to quiz He came home late wearing her shorts She came home late wearing... <laughs> a farm in the country a funny thing happened one day the hen and the rooster were talking here's what they both had to say said the rooster i can't understand it 
You used to lay eggs by the score Said the hen, well, oh, cock, I can't help it You don't come around anymore An old man of 90 got married The bride was so young and so bold In his car they both went honeymooning she married the old man for gold a year later he was a daddy at 90 he still had the knack he took one look at the baby and then gave the chauffeur the sack <laughs> here's the last one and your last chance to applaud With Mary I went from the dairy To milk cows on a farm one day I said I would just like to help you If you will show me the way I started on one they called Rosie As I sat on the stool near the wall I shouted out this old cow knows me She won't let me touch her at all That's it!